Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Sex is Medicine. I am your host, Davey Ward Erickson, here with you once again for another delicious conversation about sexuality, spirituality, pleasure, and personal growth. You can catch Sex is Medicine broadcasting new episodes every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific on Contact Talk Radio Network. And of course, you can catch us, the replay after the show on iTunes, TuneIn, Spotify. I was so happy when we were on Spotify. It's so fun to see yourself on Spotify. Uh, make sure that you click all those buttons and subscribe. And you can also go to our website, AuthenticTantra.com and sign up to have our uh, each episode, each podcast delivered hot and fresh to your inbox every Saturday morning. Again, AuthenticTantra.com. I am so excited about our top this evening because it's a topic that I've had a lot of interest in that we get a lot of questions about uh, and that's cannabis and sex and cannabis and yoga and uh, do those two live together in perfect harmony or not they're pretty it's pretty controversial uh, so we have an expert coming to us to share her wisdom with us this evening Ms. D. Dusso and um, D. where are you where are you where are you uh, broadcasting from? I'm uh, just north of San Francisco in Marin County, so it's nice and sunny here. It's awesome. Yay, wonderful. And so <laughs> I, I, I say that because I was living in Toronto, Canada, so I really am rejoicing in all this sun. All the warmth. Yes, I hear you. Actually, we're in, we're in, um, in, I'm in Kelowna, British Columbia. And so unlike the coast in Kelowna, it's more inland. So there's tons and tons of sun. So it actually feels, it's definitely not tropical in terms of the temperature, but in terms of sunshine, it's very reminiscent of when I lived in Kauai with the sunshine and the mountains and the water. We look out over a lake. It's just, it's, it's blissful for me. And I even enjoy the cold more than I ever have in my entire life. It just doesn't feel as cold here uh, as it does in other places. So the warmth of my love lighting me up from the inside out. So, <laughs> so Dee is here to talk with us today about a modality that she's developed called Ganja Yoga. And then also we're going to discuss the in interweaving of cannabis and sexuality and how cannabis can actually enhance and improve your sexual experience as a human being. So Dee, where do you come from? And tell us about Ganja Yoga. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I was studying sexuality academically. I thought I would be a sex, maybe professor at university or a therapist. And midway through that, I was just so academic, I guess. And I, I felt disembodied. I felt like I wasn't making a difference. So I switched and took a Tantra training, a Tantra yoga training that was actually not at all sexual. It was all about the spiritual aspects yeah. of Tantra. Mm -hmm. which is so cool to, to have that foundation. So it was a 500 hour teacher training. And around that time I started getting into weed. I'm a, kind of a late bloomer. I was you know, 27, 28 when I got into it. I'd been doing yoga since I was 15, but you know, just the late, late to weed. And I asked my teacher like, okay, this is making me like more relaxed. It's kind of trippy. It's kind of making yoga fun. Like, what do you think about all this? Like, am I cheating? And I was kind of worried about it in a way. Um, and she you know, didn't give like a direct blessing. She said, we all have our own path. Mm -hmm. Use it mindfully, that kind of thing. I was like, okay, I hear you. And then as soon as I graduated the teacher training, I launched Ganja Yoga. You know, I launched this cannabis enhanced yoga. Um, and around that time, I realized that it, it actually has existed in India for several thousand years, the use of cannabis for yoga. So it made my practice better. It made my students' practices better. And then, you know, it, it actually has this lineage. Um, and so not long after that, I, I moved to the US. I fell in love with an American. I got to come to San Francisco and what better place to, you know, really exploded there. So New York Times picked it up and we had, you know, you know, some really great press and, and I got to do a, a book tour. Um, Harper Collins actually reached out to collaborate on a book, which was pretty crazy. So, you know, it's so That's cool because this whole thing started in my living room. It was like, let's get high and do some yoga, you know? That is awesome. And so I want to dig into the history of that a bit more. The, 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 the union of cannabis and yoga or mindfulness practices. So uh, uh, recently there was an article published that they believe that cannabis actually uh, originated on the plateaus of Tibet. And so there is a long history. So I practice uh, Vajrayana Buddhism. And so there's a long history of cannabis infused with Buddhism. So for instance, uh, some people believe that the medicine Buddha is holding a cannabis leaf. 
And then in terms of the sexual Tantra yoga practices that were performed in Tibet, uh, there is um, documentation or textual documentation, I will say, of the usage of Samaya substances, uh, which are mind altering uh, substances and one of those being cannabis to enhance your Tantric sexual yoga practice. And I can say from you know a personal standpoint, absolutely, there's some amazing things that happen with cannabis, even just from the, the standpoint of, um, again, mindfulness practices, just like following your breath when you are on cannabis and being able to really observe and sense the movement of energy through the channels in the way that we don't typically have access to when we're in our in the intellectual functioning of our, our ordinary mind. That's it. That's totally it. You know, it, it is, you know, um, a, a, a way to shed some of the conditioning that yeah. I don't think exists as much thousands of years ago, you know, yes. with social media and, and responsibilities and capitalism, all the things that have really gone imbalanced in humanity in the last couple thousand years. So I think it's harder than ever to meditate, not to say we always need to use cannabis, but that we always need to use psychedelics, but that they can take us there and show us what's possible on a spiritual plane and give us a reason to work toward that, you know, to, to practice mindfulness when, when there's no cannabis around, but it can open up the portal and open up the, the, you know, the energy channel, if you want to talk esoterically or the neural groove in the brain, if you want to talk mm. scientifically, but it opens up this possibility. And then it's easier for me to get back to that state. Cause I, now I've touched it. I've tasted it. I felt it. I've embodied it. So mm. it's our natural state. Mindfulness is our natural, you know, it's just that we, we get bogged down, you know, and they did back in the time of Buddha as well, of course. And when yoga was developed, but I think it's even harder for us now, you know, if I do say so myself. Yeah. I mean, that's a great point. And I, I often actually think of that. I often think of like, well, they weren't running businesses back <laughs> then. They were like, all they had to do was chop wood, carry water, which is a meditation in and of itself. And then sit and follow their breath. You know, like they did, they weren't running corporations, you know, to the same degree. And exactly that, the component of technology, which as our Lama says, actually uh, is impairing the development of our natural mind. Uh, because we're so hooked in and it's absolutely addictive. The other thing I wonder in terms of cannabis and, and its historical use is we really don't know like if people were having cannabis tea for breakfast every morning or like really we don't know if they were like smoking a doobie over their morning, you know, goat butter tea or whatever it is and then they go and meditate all day like we don't they may not have recorded that because it may have just been so normalized or that it, that it wasn't something that they even needed to mention so i often think of that like we don't really know what the relationship was with substances and 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 the the uh, puritanical judgment that we have in North American culture about using anything that's going to alter your consciousness, I'm sure didn't have the same impact during that time. Was that kind of what you found in your research as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, if, even if we look the furthest back we might look, which is, you know, our primate ancestors, right, they certainly would be eating all the things, right, all the medicinal mushrooms, all the cannabis, right, and, and you know, so there's these theories, of course, that that's what evolved our higher functioning, our higher, higher consciousness was our willingness to, you know, try these plant medicines, so that's, you know, a theory, of course, um, and then if we look, you know, more, you know, uh, to yoga's origins and Buddhist origins and stuff, there is d discussion in these early texts, the early Vedas of this magical elixir that, you know, called Soma, right? And, and they don't know what exactly was in it, right? It was maybe it was just cannabis, maybe it was cannabis with other things, maybe it wasn't cannabis. And around that time, there were laws that prohibited uh, the Soma be beverage from being made in, like, um, distributed to the masses, mm. Brahmins had to consecrate it, had to like, mm. you know, they, it became like a priestly secret. Mm. And when you take somebody's access to God away, right, whether it's this beverage you might drink, you know, they, they used it on holy days and in holy yeah. rituals. So if you take away the recipe and the, uh, you know, legal ability to, to make it yourself, you have to go to church to get it now. You know, you, we can already see how propaganda, anti-cannabis kind of propaganda, you know, going into those, it is ancient Indian, mind mm -hmm. right so you know there is shiva worship there is evidence of it but we don't we can't say like with a hundred percent certainty you know but i, I would say 99.999 percent certainty yeah. that we evolved with cannabis as a species but specifically yoga was created under the influence of cannabis and tantra or you know well, that would make a lot of sense. And, and, and doing like, a, you know, again, I'm not like a cannabis researcher, but a little bit of the stuff that shows up on my radar uh, is that we have cannabinoid receptors all throughout the human body. So if we weren't meant to use it, 
if we weren't designed to use it, then why does the body, like it, it metabolizes it? Like the body is designed to use cannabis. Totally. And the points has so many multiple points of, of where it can help. You know, it, it like it helps with inflammation. It helps with pain, anxiety, uh, skin disorders, uh, like, you know, cancer. It actually can get cancer cells to kill yeah. themselves. Right. It's, yeah. it's, so it's just it has so many ways to apply it, not just smoking mm. for people who are like less mm -hmm. into that, because, you know, smoking may have. I, no, I'm not going to say me. It does have some anti-health or anti-yoga mm -hmm. elements. You know, smoking anything, you're bringing combustion of particulates mm -hmm. into your lungs. It's not necessarily ideal. I smoke, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. judging it. But if you wanted to use cannabis in the most sort of healthy way, you, there's mm -hmm. topicals, tinctures, you know, you rub it on, you put it in your belly button, there's lubes. There's mm -hmm. so many ways to, in, in, or even vaporizing, ways to mm -hmm. use cannabis that aren't the smoke, right? We can really decouple it from that kind of bad sort of, you know, 1980s mm. imagery about dirty old joints and bongs. We can mm. take an organically crafted CBD product, tincture or topical or cannabis lube, you know, or bubble bath with cannabis or pet treats. Like there's just so many ways we can use this plant. We can, we don't have to smoke it if that's, if that's a problem for people. Like, I think that's a genuine concern. And, and so I, I would say that there's so many solutions. Well, absolutely. I mean, edibles, boy, those are amazing. Making tea. I mean, there's so many ways it's that, that you butter, right? I mean, all the, the yak butter <laughs> from Tibet, you can just make cannabis yak butter. Yeah. So, so many, many different applications. And it seems as though there's evidence that human beings are designed to utilize cannabis and whether or not we do so is obviously individual choice, but I, I never underestimate the power of our culture uh, and our societal views to, um, to impede our ability to move towards our health and wellness. And so one of the things that comes to mind again is that puritanical culture, specifically in North America, which you know, shows up in other areas. Um, also historically, um, uh, what's coming to mind is there's a, there's a, I know the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, Tibetan Tantra tradition, there are these two well-defined paths to realization. And one is the path of the monk and one is the path of the Tantrika or the you know, Tantric Yogi householder. And the path of the monk is one of abstinence. So the, the monk path would avoid you know, any, can, we think anyway, we think, you know, <laughs> according to the monks today, would avoid cannabis use or ingesting alcohol or, you know, sexual contact or any kind of thing where we're going to enhance our sensual experience because the senses are bad. So we don't want to do anything that's going to enhance our sensual experience. And so I wonder how much of that has permeated into the underlying relationship that we as spiritual practitioners have between using utilizing substances and doing our spiritual practice and for example for me i had this epiphany a few weeks ago like you know i was having a glass of wine i feel a little guilty about it i'm like davy you haven't taken any vows of abstinence in this lifetime like you can drink you can smoke you can do you know it's like you can have a spiritual path that includes the celebration of our sensory experience what are your thoughts on that in terms of this like aversion to to substance that's kind of woven into the path of spirituality? Yeah, I think that you you nailed it. There's it's almost, you know, I think in part it's a fear of the altered state, a yes. fear of losing control, you know, that we want to kind of have this, I'm gonna meditate and be mindful, I'm gonna be right here and I'm in I'm in the driver's seat, right? So I think part of it is that, you know, it's whether it's through kundalini breathing, ecstatic dance, there's so many ways to lose control and get into that altar. We, some, you got to do it somehow, right? Howling at the moon, psychedelics. So, you know, I think that that's, there's a fear, but then once you experience it, it's a whole new aspect of spirituality that we were kind of maybe avoiding. It was almost like that Shiva Shakti split, masculine and feminine split. Okay, I'm only going to meditate. I'm not going to do ecstatic dance and have a glass of wine. And all that sh that Shakti, that feminine of, mm. she's the world of energy and, you know, substances. Not to say you have to use substances, but the world of sensuality, the world yeah, of physical consumption. And, and so it's like to deny our, whether it's dancing or weed or, you know, to deny aspects of our humanness, right? Some people, you know, don't want to dance. It's, you know, if you want to take the drugs out of it and just talk about dancing. Some people kind of feel like it's not spiritual to let loose, right? Mm. You know, and it's, it's mm. almost like you've got to stay in control. So I think that that's, that's part of it. And then I think you, you're also right with the substances specifically, not just the loss of control, but something about wanting to have purity. 
right? And then exactly because yeah, to interrupt you for a moment, it's okay to reach those trance states through yogic breathing. That's acceptable, or you know, ten hours of meditation. But it's not okay to smoke a blunt, right? right? And right. and reach that same level of consciousness, or do ten hours of meditation while smoking a blunt. So there's there's a there's a clear and discernible judgment yes. on the ingestion of particularly cannabis. You know, I'm not talking about snorting cocaine. We're talking about cannabis. Totally. <laughs> Specifically. And that's, sometimes people say, you know, because there is beer and wine yoga now as well. And I'm not, a, I don't have any really opinion. Ex- all I know is that cannabis is anti-inflammatory. Yeah. People involved with it. And it's a plant, you know, beer and wine. I, I drink, no, no issues, but it's, they are neuro- neurotoxic. Yeah. So if we, if we want to talk about just plants or medicines, it's like, well, how would you, if someone wanted to criticize using cannabis, it's like, well, would you take, would you take cacao before yoga? Yeah. You know, that's a mind altering plant, right? Would you take green tea? And obviously they're a lot weaker mind altering. They're not, you know, it, but, but it's like a spectrum of like, well, why yes. is green tea okay? You know, yes. are, we, are, we, are we not going to have any medicines? Yeah, we, exactly. Is that what we're, no chamomile tea? Is that what we're agreeing? We got to be pure? It doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, and, yeah. When you break, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if someone else curious. wants to, that's that's their path of, as you said, renunciate. Like if someone doesn't want to, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a choice. I, I value that choice, but it's like, yeah, to criticize my choice doesn't it doesn't make sense when I think about it rationally. Yeah. The, the, and again, that's so permeated in, and again, I can only speak about North American culture with authority because that's the one I exist in, both Canada and the United States, right, as you. Um, and in North American culture, that, 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 that view that I think that, that uh, judgment of cannabis as bad is so woven into the roots of this society. And I've examined that as well. It's like, what makes coffee okay, but cannabis not? What makes, you know, like you said, green tea or yerba mate, that's okay. But if I want to drink cannabis tea in the morning, that's not okay. There's something wrong with that. And I know there's a lot of theories on mind altering and all of that stuff, but it's just, it's just something interesting to note and absolutely correct that the impact that can, the effect that cannabis has on the body is so vastly different than alcohol. Alcohol increases inflammation, cannabis decreases inflammation. So they're not, they, they shouldn't even, it's like comparing apples and oranges, citrus and, you know, sweet fruit, not even in the same, you shouldn't even eat them in the same meal. <laughs> True. That is so true. No, exactly. Exactly. That, that, that's exactly it. So, you know, um, knowing that there's different ways to consume it, that, you know, you don't have to smoke it, you know, and also knowing that we're not saying get as high as you possibly can morning, noon and night, right? We're not yeah. saying, uh, you know, abuse. Cannabis can be abused, just like ice cream, sex, shopping, Instagram, right? It can be abused. Yeah, absolutely. Almost, almost every, everything that gives pleasure. So we're not saying do your most all the time. It's like approach it mindfully, yeah. you know, ask yourself, you know, I, I, I have a thing where I don't smoke while I'm on Instagram. If I take a smoke break from work, I'm going to go sit on my deck. I won't scroll Instagram because I'm not there with the plant. I'm not communing. Yeah. And then I, I smoked it. My joint's gone, but I, I feel like half high and half dizzy from Instagram and like yeah. that's not the altered state. So I put the phone away. If I'm going to smoke, I'll look at a tree. I'll be with my breath. Like it's more of a ritual, more of a moment, you know, and that's what, what it, we really encourage. So that's, it sounds like that's, that's what you're, you're sharing and you're teaching in Ganja Yoga is you are supporting people in learning or re relearning if they've never, you know, maybe they learned in previous lifetimes, but in learning how to have a sacred relationship with cannabis and to use it mindfully, to use it without abusing it. That's it. That's exactly it. You know, and so we, whether it's taking tolerance fast, like some, you know, I I use it every day. So I'll take a tolerance fast, meaning I'll intentionally take a pause. It'll reset my tolerance. So that's why it's Mm -hmm. got the phrase tolerance fast, but it's a way to reset your, not just your tolerance, but right relationship. If you find you're getting a little too reliant, a little too frequent, and we all have our own path up the mountaintop. So I would never judge someone else's, oh, you wake and bake. I don't wake and bake. It doesn't work for me. I like to smoke after lunch. That's just my path, right? Mm-hmm. That's just how I do it. Someone else, I would never judge a wake and baker or someone who uses bongs. Okay, I'm going to try to vape. It's my choice, mm-hmm. right? We got to get the judgment out, you know? And I think, I think, you know, cannabis propaganda is, it, it's, it, they put so much money into it, into brainwashing yeah. us. It has elements of racism in it. Like they're intertwined. Like it's a deep, dark part of American history and, you know, and, and it impacts India, it impacts Canada, right? So it's like, we got to remember we're in, we're still in propaganda, even the places, you know, Canada's legalized, our brains are still stuck in this hundred year project to make us think that, 
you know, if we smoke, we're going to, you know, kill someone. You know, remember this reefer madness stuff? These were propaganda campaigns really and really tied to, you know, anti-Latinx and anti-Black. Like, it, it's crazy when you start to look at it. So it's like, we got to be really compassionate with ourselves and each other as we're kind of waking up to this. You know, yeah, and, and, and spread education in a really compassionate way, you know? Yeah, I love that. And 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 taking the judgment out of it, that's a spiritual path in and of itself, right? I mean, isn't that the kind of the whole goal of spirituality is to live free of judgment and just to know the like one truth and, you know, everything just arising in voidness and bloody blah. So, <laughs> so taking the judgment about how you and other people use cannabis is actually part of your spiritual path. <laughs> That's it. And I love that how you broke up the history, uh, broke, uh, brought up, that's what I'm trying to use, brought up the history of uh, racism in cannabis. Because uh, if I'm recalling correctly, one of the reasons it was, uh, became illegal in the United States to begin with was because the black population used it. And because it was on the verge of putting out, it could have put out the cotton industry. Right, it could have made the cotton industry obsolete. The hemp industry could have done that. And again, the hemp industry was being created by Black people, so they had to squash and destroy that because it threatened white supremacy. So <laughs> all totally. of these things, <laughs> insidious, the insidious. That's the word insidious. You got to unpack so much, you know, unlearning, relearning. And, you know, it's 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 great to be able to be a leader in this work and to have the Ganja Yoga teacher training. You know, I train yeah. other teachers to look into what's legal in their state or in their country. Yeah teach other people about the medicine without getting like you know emotionally triggered if someone says cannabis is you know if they have myths just to sort of like well i have facts you know and, yes. and just calm. And that's like we're just beacons of light you know both for yoga but also for for cannabis and other plant medicines you know cannabis is the beginning of the discussion but i also believe in so many plant medicines and, and that we co-evolved with mushrooms and and all of these types of you know fungi uh, cactuses and things like that so i'm a fan of it all you know yeah and and a beacon of light for human choice right? The choice about what and how we want to utilize substances for our own personal growth and realization. So let's talk about the beneficial effects of cannabis and why they're so great for yoga. And then let's talk about how that helps sex. Yeah. So, so what are, what does cannabis do in the body that makes it so uh, usable for yoga? Yeah. So I'd say its main thing is like, it's used as a painkiller. It's a muscle relaxant, right? So it's just even going to get you in your body, get you mm -hmm. out of your head, a little more juicy, loosey goosey to even want to do yoga or have sex, right? To, to kind of just take you out of the prefrontal mind where yeah. we always want to be working or shopping or whatever to kind of like, oh, I don't want to do that stuff right now. It kind of just shaves off that egoic kind of front brain yeah. garbage that has a time and place, but not all the time, you know, and capitalism would want us to be always living there. Exactly. So it's kind of an act of political resistance, I think, to, to do substances, you know? I love that. Yes, because you're so right. Capitalism wants us working all the time because ultimately we are slaves to the grind for capitalism. So I love that how smoking weed, ganja, mindfully is actually a political act. It's a way of saying no to this, this level of, of the demand of capitalism. That's it. That's yeah. it. Exactly. We have to participate to some degree, but yeah, we can, we can opt out sometimes and that's, we should, we must. Um, so <laughs> for health and wellness balance. Definitely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's good for our bodies. It kind of gets us out of our heads. It shaves away anxiety. And then within yoga, it can kind of add a kind of um, novel or creative or kind of whimsical feel you know, because you're high, right? So it's like a little bit like, instead of just like, I've done, you know, this pose a hundred times, it's like, oh, high shouldery. Ooh, what yeah. you doing? You're going to go down? There is this like little, you're playing more. Yeah. You're fun. It's like, they say you never step in the same river twice. Cannabis, it's it's really apparent, right? Yeah. It make, I feel like it helps me to be more present, mm -hmm. you know, less concerned with past and future, what might happen, what did happen. I'm here and I'm loving it. It's, I'm sensual. And so it's the same ways that it helps with sex and yeah. with intimacy. You know, it gets us out of our heads, into our bodies, muscle relaxing, you know, the pelvis muscles, mm -hmm. all of that, helping blood flow. Yeah. You know, these are important, especially if it's used topically as a lube, but even smoking it, you know, helps mm -hmm. us to relax. I'm, I'm getting relaxed just talking about it. <laughs> mm. Well, I notice when I, when I, so the different methods of ingestion have a different effect on the body. And something that I've been noticing recently is that for me, when I actually smoke it, about 20 minutes later, I get a huge rush of blood in my genitals. And I'm like, 
like an itch I can't scratch. <laughs> kind of horny, right? Where, where when I use it, when I ingest it, either through an edible or something, it's a, I get a very different physiological response. So I find that fascinating that your method of ingestion is actually going to determine how the cannabis is used by your body and the result that you're going to get. Am I also correct in, in understanding um, that, that using that cannabis, I don't know if it's in just like a, a edible too, but I know smoking it increases your heart rate and increases your blood, your blood flow and blood pressure and that sort of it thing. It does. Yeah. So that can increase sensations of arousal, you know, so it's helping you relax muscles, relax, but yeah, they increase sort of heart, um, heart rate, I was going to say blood pressure, but it lowers blood pressure, but increases heart rate. Yeah. So the increased heart rate kind of can feel like jazzy, Ooh, the blood's, you know, pumping. Yeah. It feels I find for me, edibles are even more kind of like um, downer or in my, mm-hmm. not sad, but just more in, in my yeah. body, kind of like great for like a yin yoga, like not moving mm-hmm. much thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I want to, for a beginner, I'd always recommend like five milligrams or less to start mm-hmm. THC because it's easy to over consume. And then that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. It's so uncomfortable. It could deter people. So start low with the right dose and you can always add another five next time. And then it just, it's so good for cozy kind of like morning sex or restorative yoga you know, more, not really mm. talking or moving much smoking or vaping or something a little more fast acting. I find for me, I'm still kind of more like able to make eye contact and laugh. And I'm kind right. of more like high versus yes. in, the, in the couch, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so if you're going to use cannabis for mindfulness practice, whether it's yoga or meditation or sex, you don't want to take too much and be too stoned. <laughs> Definitely. Dose is, dose is even more important than strain. You know, a lot of people start talking about sativa and indica. Sativas are known to be the uppers, and like the more uplifting, euphoric, indica, the more relaxing. But it so depends on the person. Some people yeah. have just totally different than the textbook. It depends on what we ate that day, our biology, our sleep. An indica is not going to make me tired if I had caffeine and I'm seeing a friend for the first time in a month. It doesn't matter how much indica I smoked. I'm going to be hyper because caffeine and other things will change. So I think instead of thinking of strains important, but dose is really key. Most, most first timers or beginners over consume. And I don't like to use the phrase overdose. You yeah. can't die from cannabis. You know, you might feel like you, you might, you're like, oh gosh, I feel awful, but mm-hmm. it's really just over consume. It'll pass. Um, it's awful, but you know, then you just do less next time. Um, but it's, it's, if you could take my advice beforehand and, and just start with a low one puff or two puffs, it's, it's probably enough for a beginner, mm-hmm. you know, you can always add more. Yeah. And so what about, I know for some people uh, that cannabis can, can, even if you're using a low dose, it can bring up insecurities. It can, it can bring up a bunch of like stuff that we're not, again, we're not consciously aware of it because we're so busy functioning. And then when that prefrontal cortex starts to chill out a little bit, then all this other stuff, subconscious stuff rises to the surface. So what are your suggestions for supporting people in navigating that in the early or maybe even later stages of using cannabis for yoga or particular sexuality when they start to come to rest and settle down or maybe some of their traumas arise or some of their negative you know, self-image arises? What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, so that, that's definitely happened to me when I was first getting into cannabis in my late 20s. So I've had the extreme paranoia, you know, thought people were talking about me and all, you know, all of it. So I would suggest that, you know, using alter, you know, getting into altered states, using substances for that purpose, always to do it with someone that you trust really well, mm-hmm. especially if you're going to be incorporating sex, because it's like all of a sudden a new substance, a new state, and then we're just going to have sex and intimacy. It's like a lot to manage. Yeah. So I might just get high and not even plan to have sex, just kind of get high with the person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or get high with yourself or, you know, other friends kind of get used to the your relationship with weed before bringing in, you know, sexuality, mm-hmm. or maybe you masturbate, you know, kind of just... I'm thinking set and setting so that you're not introducing too many unknown variables, right? You're like, okay, getting on with a new dude. I don't really know you. I'm high as fuck. Or sorry if I'm, you know, swearing, but yeah. No, girl, I, you can cuss on my show. Good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Have you not been listening? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So yeah. So you, you, you sparked up when I said masturbate. So, so do you, you think that's a good idea, right? That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, especially if we're talking about uh, like you haven't used cannabis and sex before and you're curious about the use, 
folks masturbating self-pleasure on cannabis uh, once you go there you may never want to come back <laughs> wow yeah and so and that's really important for a you know self-pleasure is huge for uh, for establishing a sacred sexual practice anyway is first we have to create that sacred relationship with our own bodies before we can play with it with another body too but i love that that concept of before we try and you know play the game on the court with the whole team of cannabis and sex that we that we practice on our own that we that we do our rehearsal <laughs> so to speak <laughs> or that reconnection uh on our own uh so we have that safe space because it's really important to have that safe container yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So yes, yeah, smoking weed, you know, in a place that you feel comfortable, starting with a low dose, people you trust, starting with masturbating, and then you can start to add sexuality mm -hmm. as you're feeling comfortable with the, the plant. Mm -hmm. And it does, you know, increase blood flow to the genitals. It increases that whimsy. I was talking about the sense of creativity. You might, mm -hmm. you know, even with a partner you've had sex with multiple times, you might sort of see them in a new way yeah. or kind of feel free, like uninhibited to like, I'm going to do this weird little thing I didn't do before. Yeah. You know, it kind of shed some of our inhibitions. I think that's one of its main benefits as well, is it kind of, you kind of feel more childlike and free. Yeah. And so it's, it's not just relaxing of the body. It's also relaxing of the psyche yeah. of the ego. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. 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 Which is going to benefit our intimacy in every single way. So what about for folks who maybe uh, don't want to ingest it, but they do want to explore using cannabis topically or um, for instance, I've uh, used and also recommended using cannabis suppositories for dealing with vaginal pain. So if you're in a situation where you're using cannabis topically, can you get stoned from it? You, you don't get stoned from it, but you do get a kind of, sometimes you can get a tingle feeling or increased blood flow feeling. So it's not like a head high, but you might, you might detect different physiological sensations, but it doesn't mm. affect your, your consciousness. Okay. Um, and, you know, other than maybe making you more tired or more kind of embodied, you know, that kind of like ooh, gooey, it could make you gooey, but not like tripping, you know. Um, I really like cannabis or, you know, CBD, THC or CBD or some combination of uh, Epsom salt bath, you know, because then you're getting it, you know, topically inside, you know, the, the mucous membranes of the vulva and the anus, yeah. like it's kind of going into those areas mm -hmm. and sort of it's nice, again, like you said, for menstrual cramps or back pain, but also maybe as a pre-sex kind of juicy bath, mm -hmm. well, there's lubes, you can put a teeny tiny bit in your belly button, that's an application site that has, there's a nerve that is really close to the skin there. And so that's a place that some people put the uh, lube or not lube, uh, the topical, or you could put lube, whatever, any topical to, to get the, you know, endocannabinoid system through that site. So, you, you know, you can rub it in your gums, tinctures, you put under your tongue, because again, the blood vessel is really close to the skin there. So when you, you know, take a dropper, you put it under the tongue, mm -hmm. edibles. Yeah, there's so many ways to take it. It's an amazing plant, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so in your Ganji yoga classes, do you work with and explore with other people the different ways of, in, of ingesting the substance and, and safe, safe use practices, so to speak? To some degree, we, we have a safe space. It's really cozy. And I have a volunteer for if anyone over consumes um, and a lot of regulars that kind of hold the space. People are invited to bring their own method of consumption. And I have a couple different types. So if someone doesn't know what to bring, I have some choices. Mm -hmm. So we have previously had dabs, which is a type of vaporizing of pure cannabis concentrate. It's like incredibly pure um it can be really intense you want it just like a tiny little drop a tiny dab baby mm -hmm. dab you know we've had vape pens which i don't use as much of unless i know the company because there was this mm -hmm. vape pen controversy with people putting really crappy stuff and then there are even some deaths and injuries so mm -hmm. I, I don't really endorse pens unless you know really well who's making them but yeah. so many other ways to consume that are you know low low dose edibles and mm -hmm. so many fun things like that you know Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we didn't, we didn't have like necessarily education in terms of like, it's, it was more informal. It kind of felt like you were at my a party in my living room or that kind yeah. of feel. And, you know, some of my volunteers or students kind of like, Hey, did you try the Indica pen or, you know, kind of teaching each other casually. Yeah. Well, which uh, it sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine it's very formal academic kind of thing. There's a lot of different ways of learning, right? I mean, we, as children, we learn through play. And I think as adults, we still do, right? We're just trained to fit everything into boxes. But play is one of my favorite methods of learning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the difference uh, between like CBD and THC? And when would you use one and not the other? Yeah, so CBD is not psychoactive, so it doesn't change our state. So it's great for people who don't want to change their state. 
Um, it's also, you know, it has the same benefits of THC. It can uh, help with pain and inflammation. And it actually works on pain in a different way than THC. So mm. what's recommended for pain is like a little bit of THC in with your CBD. Just if you don't mm. want to, you know, just having both has actually been really, they call that whole plant medicine yeah. versus extracting the, the CBD. It's not shown to be, or the THC, it's not shown to be as effective or maybe as healthy because, you know, as we evolve, we would have taken the whole plant, but you can yeah. get a stream with very low THC. So it's whole plant, it's just not as much of the THC. So THC is the one that is psychoactive. It changes our, our perceptions a little bit, our sensations, our sense of time passing. It can feel like time's going super slow or super fast. We could get munchies, food could taste like delicious, you know, sex, mm. like that's the thing that's going to really kind of enhance in terms of beyond just like the muscle relaxing that the CBD mm. gives the THC is going to be the, like the psychedelic, it's okay. going to be in there giving you those whoop feelings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, CBD is dandy. I recommend it. It's awesome. You know, but if you, if you're, if you're interested in actually experiencing the psychoactive effect of cannabis, you would want like a, some amount of THC present too. So that's interesting. So, so that's often something that I've thought about uh, often in terms of the whole plant medicine, um, the, the extracting out of CBD and the extracting out of THC. It's like, it, 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 there's a reason it's a whole plant. Like if you extract certain things out of lavender oil, it becomes a carcinogen. But the whole lavender plant is not a carcinogen, right? But if you extract this little piece out of it, then it will be will become that. And it's because we're meant to use whole plants. We're not meant to necessarily use this chemical derivative of the plant. So I've often thought of that as of using the whole plant as medicine. You're going to get the mes most beneficial effect. What I did not know is that you could get strains of cannabis that are super high in CBD and that still have the THC, but just in a lesser amount. So I did not know that. So I'm imagining that you can get those as tinctures or edibles or even smokables. So for people that really want the CBD with just a little bit of THC, that might be a really good option. That's it. Totally. And, 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 you know, THC and CBD are just two of the cannabinoids, the cannabis molecules. There are, I, I'm not sure the number, but like, let's say between 80, like over 80, I'll just, I know for sure. So like, we're talking these two players, but there's CBN, CBG, they're all so far THC is the only psychoactive one, but they're all being shown to have amazing anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer. So in time, as we get more knowledge, we'll be able to go into the dispensary or order online, like a specific strain with, you know, all the molecules as we want them. It's a whole plant, but it's a strain mm. that was grown perfect for what I need because I have digestive mm. issues and this one helps with that. And you yeah. would take that strain, you know, and we can get real amazingly granular with it as we, as we allow ourselves to learn it and shed propaganda, you know? Wow. That's so fascinating. I love that idea of being able to go to a pharmacy and like have cannabis prescribed for indigestion or ulcers or, you know, vaginismus, something like that. So that's, that is an area that I, that I'd love to, to stir the conversation to, because that's the other thing that I've encountered as well in, in terms of like research and cannabis and sexual dysfunctions is, is it seems like cannabis is really, really great for low libido, for, for speaking for people with vulvas and vaginas, really great for low libido, really great for vaginal pain, really great for, you know, all sorts of issues that may make our sex less than pleasurable. What is, what is your research showing you about that? Yes, I would say the same. So, you know, I, I have gone to yoga, but I'm also a sex coach, you know, mm -hmm. cannabis inspired. If people are interested, sex coach based in the Tantra tradition. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the couples who come to me for coaching or people who come to me for coaching are most of the time their issue is, yeah, low libido. It's just yeah. rampant. Right. And it's like, stress is, you know, in capitalism, yeah. the things we talked about are, are the reason, right? Yeah. Um, it's not like cannabis is going to be the silver bullet that is the only answer. You can't just mm -hmm. honestly smoke a joint and cure erection dysfunction. Like, I don't think it works that I wish it, you know, it doesn't, it's not, it's going to your troubles go away yeah, for the right, next two exactly. hours. <laughs> yes, yeah, not, plants don't work like that, but like, you know, coupling cannabis with a breathing practice, with a visual cannabis with meditation, with mindfulness, with visualizing, you know, the blood flow going into the penis, if that's the issue you're working on, with visualizing journaling, support with a friend, a therapist, we need all these tools and avenues to heal and to have our optimal functioning. Cannabis is not going to be able to provide a silver bullet on its own, if that makes sense. Well, it sounds like it's like a supplement, right? So it's like, I don't take, you know, I, I take vitamin supplements and that's not my food. <laughs> I still 
still have to eat food, but I supplement the food that I eat with my vitamins and my herbs and that sort of stuff. So cannabis is an herb. So it's essentially a supplement that we're discussing adding to enhance the functioning of the human human system. That's it. Exactly. So when used in addition to other tools and supplements, it can, it's incredibly helpful. It's incredibly helpful. And it, it helps couples or people who are looking for, you know, that mindfulness, that intimacy, they want to slow down. They really want to make eye contact or have a nice long hug. You know, they don't want to rush through sex the way, you know, maybe porn teaches us and illustrates that, you know, people are starting to wake up like that's, that's junk food. That's not satisfying. Yeah. Right, that quickie once in a while, sure, whatever. But it's not satisfying to always eat, you know, fast food, as we know. Mm -hmm. People are wanting that intimacy, but it's almost like a, we don't know how. We haven't had the yeah. modeling, right? So cannabis again can help us to get some of that inhibition away. So it's like, okay, I'm here with you. I, I can make eye contact. I can giggle. Mm -hmm. You know, I can be real. You know, it sounds like the way some people will like have a drink. Right. And it's to shut down that the functioning of the intellectual functioning of the of the frontal lobe. <laughs> I'm saying that correctly, but it's the same reason, you know, that's what that's what alcohol does is it shuts down the prefrontal cortex, which is desirable in some cases. Right. I mean, Ooh, sometimes yes. you want to. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. sometimes you need to, you know, in order to fully surrender and relax, we got to let go of yeah. you know, thinking and planning. The vigilance. Yes, that's the yeah. word. Yes. Yeah, so it's Have great you for that. Have you worked with cannabis at all with like trauma survivors in terms of using the cannabis and the yoga to help heal and, and release and restore? I haven't. I can't say that I have I, as a trauma survivor myself. I mean, I've worked with myself, but I haven't, mm -hmm. you know, worked with a couple, uh, people in that specific way. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that there's great, um, amazing uh, studies and stuff coming out that are showing that cannabis can really be helpful for helping people to reconnect with the body and to do some of that nervous system rebalancing yeah. that yeah, we yeah. need, you know, you can only talk therapy can only take us so far. We need to actually heal the body when we, when we have trauma. So, you know, again, the cannabis can help us to, to even occupy it and to feel kind of safe there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it sounds as though the whole, the medicine of cannabis is that it allows, it, it, it helps anchor us in our somatic experience. It helps anchor us in our sensual experience, as like sensual meaning the five senses, which we are so distracted from and often disconnected from, particularly in the Western society. Exactly, precisely. And people say it's, it causes demotivation, but it only demotivates us from the stuff that our body and soul doesn't really want to be doing any at that moment. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like you should smoke before work because you might, yeah, not feel like working. But, you know, when you have the right time and place to smoke or consume, it's like, yeah, you're de you don't want to think about egoic concerns. You want to smell the roses. Yeah. You know, you, we're, we're animals, right? We, yeah. So it's like cannabis can help me to remember that sensual animal part of like just hearing the birds or looking at a leaf or yeah, masturbating, just connecting with myself in whatever way, you know, through the senses. Yeah. yeah. And again, and I, who's telling us that, that it impairs our functioning. It's the, the capitalistic patriarchal society that's invested in our labor. Yes. <laughs> right? totally. So how yeah. dare we have a day off <laughs> or an evening right. off or yeah, yeah. How, how dare we disengage from the grind? That's right. Yeah. yeah. In terms of um, sexuality and pleasure, um, what are, do you have some, some, you mentioned cannabis lube. So that's a big question for people like, can, where do you get them? What, what if it's, what if cannabis is illegal where you live? Can you still order cannabis lube? Where do you get it? That sort of thing. So right. first let's talk about different cannabis lubes, where to get them. And then what happens if it's illegal? Totally. Yeah. So there are lubes that have uh, THC is the main ingredient. There are ones that have CBD and then ones that have kind of both of, uh, you know, of, those are the main cannabinoids that we're, we know about right now. So CBN, CBG, the other ones I mentioned are so minor. They're not really featured in lubes at this time. Mm -hmm. So a CBD lube, I, I think you can buy anywhere in the US, probably not anywhere in the world, but I think CBD is now allowed to be shipped within the US. So okay, uh, again, even if you take the THC lube or the one, you know, you're not going to get high from a topical, right? Mm -hmm. So I like, so it doesn't, it's not, I'm not going to feel the THC in my mind the way I would when I eat, eat it or smoke it. So it doesn't really matter if my lube is CBD. I mean, maybe they have a little bit of a difference on, on arousal. I'm not sure, but you're not going to feel it in your head anyway. So CBD is, is fine. And again, if you can have whole plant medicine, that's ideal. Yeah. Just, it yeah. seems as though that's ideal, right? 
Yeah, but if but if you can only get CBD, whether from, you know, you can <clears throat> you can get a CBD extract, but you can also get whole plant CBD from hemp, right? So it's 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 nothing added or taken away, right? So it's mm -hmm. it, that's 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 hemp based CBD is ideal more than an isolated CBD. Okay, so that's an important distinction for all of our wonderful listeners. So hemp-based CBD is reign supreme in terms of CBD, and particularly when you're looking at a lube, a whole plant lube, hemp-based CBD would be ideal. And then the also important thing is that you're not going to get high from putting CBD on or um, the, from the, putting cannabis lube on your genitals. This is important because I've had a lot of people concerned about this. Like, am I going to get is my is my yoni going to get high? I wish it would. I wish it would. Yeah, <laughs> I, I put a hundred milligrams in there, and she, did, you know, it was a little bit warmer than normal, but That's she didn't it. get high. So, so I recommend, you know, there's lubes on the market. They're all. I've had a couple of different ones. They're all cool. Some have like little additives, like a little bit of. Um, tea tree oil for yoni health or um, like, you know, that kind of thing. I like to make my own. I do find them to be a little bit of an expensive luxury product and it's not yeah. hard to make our own. Um, and so yeah. the oil I like to use is uh, coconut oil or you could use like butter. So a higher saturated fat oil versus like an olive um, is gonna extract more of the healing medicine. And so okay. our coconut oil medicine is going to be stronger than my olive oil medicine. Oh, okay. So that's important. You're putting it inside my vagina. It's, you know, I, I recommend a saturated fat. Okay. All right. Cause the saturated fat is going to extract. So you can just like buy some weed from the store and like cook it down with some coconut butter and then rub it all over your vulva and you're good to go. Exactly. If you use the all cheese right, guys. to um, catch the particle, you know, strain it through a cheesecloth, you know, that kind of thing. And that's pretty much it. And then what I do is I pour some of that oil into a ice cube tray. Mm -hmm. You could probably do something cooler than this, but what I do is, and then I, when it's frozen, I slice it and make little tiny suppositories. Oh, I love it. Okay. So coconut butter, cannabis, yoni, genital suppositories, guys, you just got the recipe right here on sex is medicine. <laughs> Press repeat, get it again, melt it down in a little pot with some coconut butter. You can get a big tub at Costco, get you some weed, cook it all up, strain it out with some cheesecloth, pour it in ice cube, cube, ice cube trays, freeze it up, cut it up. You're good to go. Look yeah, at that. You, can, you can wrap each one in cellophane, right? After you cut it and then they're good. They're ready to go frozen in the freezer for menstrual cramps, for back pain, for, you know, sexual play. Yeah. Uh, whew, that's it. <laughs> the gold right there so if we want more cannabis recipes and how to know how to weave more support weaving uh mindfulness and cannabis in their yoga uh and spiritual journey how can they get a hold of you and where yeah so instagram is ganja yoga and that's also my website ganjayoga.com i have an online subscription of uh, pre-recorded ganja yoga classes that you can do on demand. I have like over a hundred there that's at ganja yoga dot online I have teacher training I have teachers all over the um, country and maybe some around the world. I think now we're putting on a 420 event. Not sure if that's going to be timely for your listeners. Nope, never mind. But yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it, it, it could be free. timely for our listeners. Absolutely. Oh, I was just shaking my head because I love it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Our 420 is going to have six hours of like each teacher. There's 20 teachers putting on a 20 minute presentation of a little cannabis yoga presentation. Some about how cannabis help opens the chakra, some about cannabis and sex, some about good yoga alignment, like totally pra pragmatic. 20 teachers. So on 420, we're going to have like a bomb festival. I'll send you the link. Yeah, well, we are going to post it with this video because you are, yes. yeah, absolutely. We will, it will be out before 420. We're going to be yes. live before 420, everyone. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so good. GandraYoga.com. <laughs> That's awesome. It. Awesome. And you also are a sacred sexuality coach. That's correct as well. So yeah, my website for that is my name, D Du So, which is D-U-S-S-A-U-L-T. Here in America, they like to say do salt. It's fine. So D Du So or D Du Salt, whatever you prefer. That's where you can find more about my uh, sex coaching practice. I also have like some sexy yoga classes. I call them sexy flex cannabis optional, but, you know, just moving your hips that we've done a few through zoom. I used to do them in person, but, you know, kind of just getting turned on through yoga means and just sort of that, like a very gentle kind of Kundalini inspired class. 
So if someone wanted some guidance about how to weave cannabis into their intimacy, that would be a good place for them to reach out to you. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love working with people, with couples, you know, all through Zoom right now, but you know, cannabis education to the degree people want it, or if they just want to smoke and talk about their sex issues or smoke and do some partner yoga, you know, it can be as much talk or as much practice as people kind of want, yeah. depending on where they're coming from. It's clothing on sort of PG, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. but sexy, mm-hmm. kind of more foreplay, yoga foreplay type stuff. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Cause that's what comes to mind to me for me is just having the support and the guidance. Cause that's what we used to have. I imagine way back in the day, uh, is, is guidance and support from again, an established, you know, shaman or practitioner who could guide us through the process of using these substances that was in a way that is supportive and healthy. Um, so that's very much what's missing from this culture is that type of guidance and support. So I love that you're able to provide that to people who are starting, who are wanting to expand and enhance their journey of intimacy by weaving in this beautiful, wonderful, life-giving substance. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so excited for this 420 event. I, we're going to make sure that, that everyone knows about it. Um, and make sure you go to ganjayoga.com to sign up for it. And everybody listen to the show. Thank you so much. This was so, so fascinating and enriching. And I want to go smoke some cannabis right now. Uh, but I'm not going to. So... <laughs> I hope all our listeners out there, if you if you so uh, decide to take a toke, indulge, enjoy your night, uh, and make sure you tune in next week for another incredible episode of Sex is Medicine with Davey Ward Erickson, and make sure to subscribe on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, YouTube, all the places, and go to our website, AuthenticTantra.com, if you haven't been there already. Have a beautiful night. Blessings. We'll see you next week. <laughs>